Arirang Special. Hello and welcome to Arirang Special. On today's Arirang Special, we will have an in-depth look at the sudden death of Kim Jong-nam. On February 13th, Kim Jong-nam, who is North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's half-brother, was killed at an airport in Malaysia. At around 9 a.m., Kim Jong-nam was attacked by two unidentified women at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport 2, waiting for a flight to Macau. According to the Malaysian police, Kim Jong-nam told medical workers that he was attacked with a chemical spray, and then he died on the way to the hospital. In 1971, Kim Jong-nam was born as the son of leader Kim Jong-il and an actress named Song Hye-rim. He was considered to be the heir apparent to his father Kim Jong-il and he shares the Baekdu bloodline running from Kim Il-sung to Kim Jong-il. However, after being pushed aside from the succession race, Kim Jong-nam has been hiding out overseas for a long period of time. All eyes are now on the background of his sudden death. And Adidas Special takes an in-depth look at the death of Kim Jong-nam and discuss current situation of North Korean regime as well. For today's discussion, we are joined by Kim Chang-soo, Senior Research Fellow at the Korea Institute for Defense Analysis. It's great to see you again. Song Seung jong Professor at Military Science at Daejeon University. Thank you for having me. Go Myung Hyun, Research Fellow at the Asan Institute for Policy Studies. Thanks for having me, too. First of all, who is Kim Jong Nam died in uh, Malaysia's capital? Dr. Kim, please tell us more about himself. You know, we have a very limited information about Kim Jong Nam, but he is known as the half brother of the Supreme Leader of North Korea beginning this year because he changed the name from the dear leader to the Supreme Leader. Uh, if you look at his New Year's message in, in January, and he was the son of Kim Jong-il, second wife, Song Hye-rim, uh, who was allegedly divorced, and they got married, and they gave birth to Kim Jong-nam in 1971. He's, so he's 46 years old now. He was born in Pyongyang, and he has been known as a potential rival for Kim, Jong, uh, Kim Jong-un because they are all the brother, they are brothers, and they are they have the same father who, who was Kim Jong-il. So this is a typical case of you know, brother killing and fratricider. And if you look at all the history of humankind, it's a typical case killing princes, mm. prince, <laughs> princes rather. Yeah, prince mm -hmm. killing, and this is a very, uh, it's, it's very common in our human history. Uh, European history, Jewish, in the Islamic, or the Asian countries, they all have a history of you know, prince, princes killing their princes, their brothers. It's a just a typical case of very common phenomenon in our human history. Okay. Why do you think Kim Jong-nam had been pushed out from the succession race in North Korea? Um, Kim Jong-nam was an, an heir apparent until 2001, but thereafter, uh, for some mysterious reason, uh, he was pushed out of the uh, power race um, the, all of a sudden, the young and inexperienced uh, the, uh, Kim Jong-un emerged as a, a final winner. Uh, but I think that the, from the perspective of uh, uh, Kim Jong-il, I think that he tried to uh, put in perspective the, the entire being of his son, uh, uh, Kim Jong-nam, which means that the, uh, he tried to objectively observe his mentality and his uh, way of life. Um, he might have a question uh, with regard to he has uh, what it takes as a, a leader and uh, a dictator or a boss, ruthless authoritarian. Um, I think that the, uh, uh, in all likelihood, I think that he made a final decision. Uh, like uh, uh, he's not the right person as his successor. Uh, he's uh, not uh, enough to be a person who can uh, garner the respect not only from the party and the military and rank and files and ordinary citizens and, and all that. Um, therefore, uh, with some um, level of doubt, 
he made a faithful and a final decision to make Kim Jong-un as his successor. But I don't know exactly why. It's a, a, a great subject for the further study. I see. Mm. Dr. Go, all eyes on, uh, on the background of the Kim Jong-nam's sudden death. The dominating opinion is that Kim Jong-un might have ordered Kim Jong-nam killed. Mm. What is your take on this? Well, like in everything uh, associated with North Korea, it's all speculation, clearly. But I also subscribe to you know, uh, the theory that Kim Jong-un is most likely to be behind uh, Kim Jong-nam's uh, sudden death. Uh, there are several reasons why we can suspect this. One is the brazen nature of the killing. Um, Kim Jong-nam was killed in a broad daylight in, in a major international airport in a foreign territory. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, this, this, this is, this is probably intended to send a signal or message to those people watching what's going on in North Korea. That's one. And second is the, the MO, the model operandi of how the killers carried out this uh, uh, action. So the, for these two reasons, there's very, it's highly likely that uh, North Korea uh, was behind this killing. And uh, another reason why we suspect Kim Jong-un has made this uh, order the killing of his own, own half-brother is that uh, Kim Jong-nam is part of the royal family in North Korea. Uh, Kim Jong-nam is the son of Kim Jong-il, the previous leader. Also, as, uh, he's the grandson of uh, the founder of North Korea, Kim Il-sung. So he has a very, he's, he comes from the royal bloodline. The uh, only person who can uh, touch such person is actually Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of North Korea. So for uh, combining all these uh, different theories and uh, observations, uh, it's very likely that Kim Jong-un is behind this. Okay, so North Korea can, especially Kim Jong-un regime, can send a strong message not only mm -hmm. internal, but also external international community uh, Th through the Kim Jong-nam's death. That's right. Right. Dr. Go, why do you think Kim Jong-nam was killed at mm. Malaysia? I heard that a lot of North Korean uh, elites mm. visit Malaysia uh, when they escape from their mm. country. Is there any uh, special reason, do you mm. think? Well, uh, if you, I mean, allowed to speculate, and then <laughs> I'm allowed to put myself in the shoes of North Korean agents who want to uh, need to carry out this operation, you first have to uh, look into where Kim Jong Un, I'm uh, sorry, Kim Jong Nam uh, lives in, uh, uh, which different countries Kim Jong Nam lives. Uh, we know Kim Jong Nam uh, lives in, I mean, used to live in Macau, which is mm -hmm. a special administration region of China, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, he also has been seen in Singapore, and this time in Malaysia. So uh, clearly Macau is out. It's out of question because it's a part of China. So uh, even if indeed Kim Jong Un is behind this operation, then you don't want to create a, uh, you know not necessary conflict with China by carrying out this operation in the, in the Chinese territory. So obviously Macau is out of question, and Singapore is also another very important uh, uh, regional uh, hub for North Korea's uh, overseas economic network. So you don't want to jeopardize uh, uh, your uh, North Korea's relationship with Singapore. So Malaysia, in a way, becomes the least, uh, uh, least like a risky uh, place to carry mm -hmm. out this operation for the North Korean agents. I think that's the reason why uh, Malaysia was chosen as the, you know, the place to uh, carry out the killing. But there's, I think that there's another uh, uh, aspect to this. Uh, if uh, it's indeed true that uh, North Korean the elites who want to defect to South Korea use Malaysia, as a, 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 a via point uh, before uh, reaching uh, South Korea, uh, then this probably sends a message to the North Korean elites who are in thinking or sp uh, entertaining the idea of defecting to South Korea. This shows that to these elites, the potential elites that they want to defect, that uh, North Korea maintains an uh, like a presence, an uh, intelligence presence in Malaysia. They are watching uh, who, uh, who's coming in and who's leaving the country. So that means that uh, if a uh, North Korean state wants to go after po uh, possible defectors who want to transit through Malaysia, they, you know, there's a high risk for them to use Malaysia as a transit point. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are multiple meanings to this, but then the most likely reason why Malaysia happens to be the place for this killing is probably because Malaysia is the least, likely, uh, least politically risky place for North Korean state mm -hmm. to carry out the operation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Kim, there's been various speculation on Kim Jong-nam's death. Some people are saying that 
it might be because of the excessive loyalty of Kim Jong Un's aides in uh, Pyongyang, while others are saying that there might be another power uh, behind his death, uh, maybe a third country. What is your th uh, what is your thoughts on this? Uh, this is just an assumption, a speculation that Kim Jong Un, as a typical case of you know fratricide, a brother killing because he wants to show his presence on the throne. Nobody can just compete him. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's the only leader, supreme leader in North Korea. And now we are approaching the, the birthday of Kim Jong-il uh, on uh, February 16th. That's why we, uh, we presume that they filed an R a modified RBM you know, type of missiles a couple of days ago. And maybe this kind of incident was happened in, in Kuala Lumpur. But this is not a kind of all of a sudden kind of direction followed by his agents. And this has been kind of insinuated for long because he, one time he was believed as the heir apparent to Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong but somehow at the time he was 30 years old and Kim Jong was, Kim Jong was too young, like at the right. Mm -hmm. So that was no competition between the big mm -hmm. brother and yeah. younger brother. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. Kim Jong-un mm -hmm. is 32 or 33 years old mm -hmm. and he's strong and big enough to maintain his power. So that's why over the last five years, uh, on, on, his, uh, on his throne, he insinuated this kind of necessity mm -hmm. why they have to get rid of the number two and number three man to surround him, surrounding him. Continuing to Dr. Kim's uh, mm -hmm. argument, mm -hmm. uh, if Kim Jong-nam was killed on the orders of Kim Jong-un, what do you think would be Kim Jong-un's intention at this moment? Uh, it might be a sign of insecurity to what extent he feels uh, uh, insecure as to his grip on the power. But uh, I think that the, the way the, the raisin attack by the, the, the female uh, agent in the, day, uh, the broad daylight uh, murdered uh, that kind of uh, prominent uh, figure. Um, I think that the, uh, if that is the case, if uh, Kim Jong-un is the person who made the final call to, to kill uh, his uh, stepbrother, uh, I think he's controlling the nook and granny of the North Korean s uh, system, which means that the, he is in the final stage of consolidating uh, his power uh, the, in uh, five years of uh, ruling. Uh, but uh, the final uh, question might be the, whether this killing uh, contributed to um, the enhancing the stability of the regime or undermining his regime. We don't know yet for sure. Mm -hmm. So we are waiting for the post-mortem of this uh, incident. It's still an ongoing situation. I think that we have to keep a very watchful eye on this situation. All right, yeah. we have to see the situation, mm -hmm. wait and see mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. happen, mm -hmm. uh, what will happen in Pyongyang okay. uh, in the yeah. near future. Mm -hmm. Dr. Goh, we like, uh, I'd like to discuss a little bit further on mm -hmm. his uh, argument. Do you think the Kim Jong-nam's assassination means that the current North Korean regime is unstable? We cannot discount uh, the, the idea that this could actually be a sign of uh, confidence on the part of Kim Jong-un that he has consolidated his power base, and now he can afford to uh, carry out this kind of brazen uh, provocations or, or send, afford to send messages to uh, powers outside North Korea and in factions within North Korea. And the reason why I discount the idea that this could be an indicator of instability within the regime is because we haven't seen signs that there, uh, North Korea is engaged in an internal struggle for power. Uh, it seems to be that uh, Kim Jong-un has consolidated his power base for a couple of years by now, I mean, especially after the, the purge of Chang Song Tech, his mm -hmm. uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, one, I, um, that's the reason why that, uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't uh, subscribe to the idea that this is an indicator of uh, a possible like uh, internal power struggle or instability. But that doesn't mean that the regime is stable uh, in the long run. Uh, this means that uh, uh, Kim Jong-un um, might, uh, it actually this could be an indicator that Kim Jong-un doesn't have enough political skill to somehow uh, embrace the opposing voices within the regime. Because we know for a fact that Kim Jong-nam has been excluded from the succession line for a long time. He's been exiled pract practically outside of North Korea. Mm -hmm. He has no connection to powers to be within North Korea. 
So in many ways, Kim Jong-nam is not a major threat to anyone, uh, including Kim Jong-un. So the fact that Kim Jong-un couldn't stand the fact that Kim Jong-nam was alive and working and living happily outside of North <laughs> Korea and had to carry out, uh, I mean, order the killing of his own half-brother indicates that uh, Kim Jong-un is uh, still using violence as a method to control the North Korean society and uh, control the elites in North Korea. So I think his lack of uh, political skills and somehow to, you know, create uh, uh, stability within the North Korean society is going to be detrimental for the long-term so, uh, sustainability of this regime. Okay. Some people have said that Kim Jong-un's uh, brother, Kim Jong-chul, and uh, Kim Jong-nam's son, uh, Kim han so might be also be an, uh, in, consist uh, in constant danger. Uh, what is your take on this? Uh, it will be very difficult to tell whether they'll be safe or they'll be isolated from the Kim Jong-un or his uh, people. Uh, but we just speculate because Kim han so is the son of Kim Jong-nam who was just assassinated and he feel some grudge over his you know, uncle. So he'll be a potential threat, not in, not in the near future, but someday as Dr. Go mentioned now, uh, this is a sign of strength of uh, and the whole, the grip of his power on his, on his regime. But actually it's a two faces of, uh, two sides of coin, I should mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why it is, might be, be viewed as a strength, but actually mm -hmm. it's yep. a sign mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. growing weakness. instability, weakness mm -hmm. on his power. Uh, so this is a kind of short term this is certain rationality that he, he hopes to wield a stronger power by showing that I'm this much capable of killing anybody who, who might against me and against also his you know, family members. But again, people are, people are very smart, even though they are very mm -hmm. silent. Sometimes they're red, reticent. So my point is this kind of tyrant and despots tend to believe, misjudge the people's silence mm. for Mm -hmm. ignorance, mm -hmm. or they misjudge people's acceptance of his actions. So this is a very unique, very complicated situation, as a matter of fact, in North mm -hmm. Korea, while Kim Jong really believes, okay, now the, my final, mm -hmm. uh, this, the list will be, mm -hmm. the, the men on this will be gone by one by one, like include, mm -hmm. starting from, you know, Chang Song Tech and almost 100 other peoples. And this is just another people on the list, mm -hmm. assassin list. Uh, that he wants to see, even though he didn't give a specific order to any people, but he kind of insinuated, implied mm -hmm. that I want anybody <laughs> challenging me. Okay. Mm -hmm. This kind of message has been taken care of by these people. Mm -hmm. And so the chances are pretty good. So we have to be very careful about the Kim Jong-nam's you know, son and his brothers because mm -hmm. they might face the same uh, situation mm -hmm. someday. So that's why we have to pay attention to the safety of these people around him. For the brothers uh, can be a, a political opponent. What about sisters? Kim Yo-jung can be a good uh, aide of Kim Jong-un at this point. So what is different, brothers and sisters in North Korea? Kim Yo-jung is because they have the same mother, uh, Ko young mm -hmm. But, you know, Kim Jong, oh yeah, Kim jong Chol and Kim, they have the same mother. But Kim han so is a Kim Jong-nam's uh, 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 son. So he is a they have a different uh, model. So that's why this is not just a sibling rivalry between the, uh, among the brother and sisters with one uh, father and mother. This is because they're step, uh, the, you know, mm -hmm. uh, half brothers, mm -hmm. and they feel almost sometimes like it's just anybody else because their intimacy may just turn out to be much worse than any people because they believe these are the people I should, really should be careful about because these people have the, the great potential to challenge me. Not anybody, people on the, on, the, on the streets, because they have no interest, they have no power to challenge me, but people who are close to me, who have been under the umbrella of the, the king's royalty or the umbrella, they might feel that I deserve kind of status. So that's why Kim Jong-il might be prompted by his age that, oh, you'd better you know, t get rid of these people as well. So chances are always there, but this is just speculation. I hope this would not be the case because they have to maintain a very good relationship within, within his own family because that will show the strength, the stability of his own regime because it is in the, in the best interest, interest of the Kim Jong himself and also the, the, Kim Jong, the North Korean people as a whole. So this is, I would say this is a kind of strength for him, but also weakening, uh, the weakness 
on the part of Kim Jong-il. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lastly, please let me hear from each of your final remark regarding this question. After the sudden death of Kim Jong-nam, does it mean that uh, changes have been taking place within the North Korean regime? If so, what uh, South Korean government should be prepared for the changes in the North? I don't think that it happened all of a sudden. It was uh, premeditated uh, and uh, planned for a long time. And the timing has been um, the coincided to have a uh, maximum effect in a synergistic way in order to, I think that the ultimate aim of uh, this couple of uh, instant it, it uh, would be his, uh, his calculation to uh, bring the regime himself into the limelight, the center of the attention of the international community, which means that I'm here and I am a person to be reckoned with. And then it is a strong message to Trump, who, had a, who was having a first ever summit meeting with the foreign uh, leaders after his uh, inauguration. I think the implication is quite uh, significant. All right. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't really uh, speculate about the short-term implications of this event. I mean, uh, as I said before in the previous question, that I wouldn't take this as an indicator of instability within the regime. Mm -hmm. But I think that there are strong long-term implications, meaning the regime itself is uh, it's weaker now because if you just don't focus on Kim Jong-un, but if you focus on North Korea as, as a country, uh, the regime is uh, less robust because after Kim Jong-un is gone, the regime is left with fewer alternatives, fewer people to succeed Kim Jong-un in case, not only Kim Jong -un, when Kim Jong-un loses power because, uh, you know, by assassination, but if like Kim Jong-un dies because of an accident or like a, a disease, uh, because he gets sick, uh, now the regime it has, it comes with fewer options in case of uh, Kim Jong-un is gone from this world. So in that sense, the regime is less robust and it, it, mm -hmm. this is a factor for instability in the long run. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we have to pay attention at this moment. Uh, Dr. Kim? The time was so perfect because there was an Abe in the Trump meeting in, in Florida and there was a, a couple of days ago, there was a uh, test fire on another modified mm -hmm. you know, IRBM type of missile. Another, to, uh, another thing to do that is uh, if you look at the all, if you read the lines of the mm -hmm. Kim Jong Un mm -hmm. uh, New Year's message, mm -hmm. because he said he is the now supreme leader of North Korea, mm -hmm. and I'm a very kind. If I tra literally, uh, literally translate it, I'm a kind-faced father of all these people. I love these people, loving leader, because on the one hand he was admitting his all kind of fallacies, mistakes he made over the last five years poor economic performances, mm -hmm. but the only thing mm -hmm. they can show up, pri be proud of, is kind of you know, sophistication of nuclear and missile capability. So if you look at all these series of events, one missile event, test firing, and mm -hmm. the Abe uh, Trump summit meeting, and also this assassination in Kuala Lumpur, it might turn out, if you look back, we can kind of interpretation mm -hmm. that this was premeditated, mm -hmm. and this was very well orchestrated, mm -hmm. but Nobody knows for sure because yep. this might just happen. <laughs> but anyway, that's one we should be prepared mm -hmm. for this kind mm -hmm. of yep. Another mm -hmm. effect is this might uh, mitigate the impact of the test firing of IRBMs because we were all talking about North Korean missile mm -hmm. capabilities. And they got by putting this kind of assassination at the center stage mm -hmm. rather than at the, at the, the, at, uh, in, this, uh, in the mm -hmm. per perimeters mm -hmm. because this will observe the, all the international attention to this particular in instance. Mm -hmm. So this is a very complicated, if, mm -hmm. I don't know whether this is true, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we can speculate this also might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. They yeah. want to just mm -hmm. mitigate mm -hmm. the impact of mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the test for of the, the impact yeah, of uh, two events. Yeah, which right. one is mm -hmm. done during center stage. Mm -hmm. right. All right, mm -hmm. the sudden death of Kim Jong-nam, we have to understand it's a related effect in the international community with, uh, along with the Trump Abe uh, summit and as well as the ILBM test launch. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we have to see the long-term effect in North mm -hmm. Korean politics. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much for taking your time and sharing your opinions today. Thank you for watching. This has been Kim Han Gwan.
Thank you.